Hello friends, welcome to AI Flux. So yesterday at Apple's Wanderlust event, they not only released the new iPhone 15 and the A17 Pro processor, but they also announced new Apple Watches, and most importantly, the Apple S9 processor for the new watches. And it might seem like this is just a revamped A15 with some similar features, made to be a little bit faster and more power efficient, but I think there are way bigger implications for AI, specifically deploying AI on Apple Watches. So let's get into it. So at a high level, you might think, well, like what is the value of doing AI things on an Apple Watch? You know, for instance, you're interacting mostly with your phone. Your watch might notify you of things that happen on your phone, but otherwise, as outside of joggers or people who are using the Apple Watch Pro to go and scuba dive with, who's really needing AI on their watch? And I think this is a valid question, but I think we have to look a little bit higher level at Apple's approach to this and some of the open source work going on to really understand what's going on. So curiously, I think the Java programming language and why this became so pervasive in the early 2000s has really striking parallels with Apple's approach to AI, at least in terms of hardware. Right now, you have to have hardware that runs AI things, and Apple's pretty much killing it in this way. And the problem that Java solved in the early 2000s is there were multiple platforms. It was no longer just Windows or just Mac or just Linux or just servers. And the challenge for a lot of developers was, well, if I wanna make one app and have it be used by the most people, I have to have basically five completely different apps written to appear the same. And the real killer feature of Java was, cool, right? One application in Java and then compile to every device. And the real parallel here is with the GGML project and running AI infrastructure on Apple Silicon, which is now approaching speeds of NVIDIA processors in some cases. So the idea here, right, is you create one model or you quantize one fine-tuned model and build infrastructure once, and then you're able to deploy on Macs like the M2 Ultra, the M2 Max, um, the iPhone A17 Pro, and now the S9. Now, of course, um, you will always be able to do more LLM-wise on something like an M2 Ultra than you will be uh, on an Apple Watch. But there are really interesting implications to this, and I think it's setting up Apple to have the biggest hardware platform that can then run LLMs or software that uses AI or provide developers a platform to use AI to drive value with. So the CPU itself is roughly an A15 Pro, just shrunk and made to be more power efficient. At a high level, um, there's 60% more transistors, which roughly means the CPU component of this processor is about 60% faster. So that just means snappier animations, uh, faster computation in general. Uh, the GPU is also 30% faster. So this also means that it can be a bit more efficient and handle more complex animations. And what's really interesting is prior, the Apple S8 chip used in Apple Watches did not have a neural engine. And now there is a four core neural engine in every single Apple Watch. And you might think, well, why do you need that? And what's pretty cool here is right now, um, Siri can actually run natively on an Apple Watch. And of course, Apple is kind of tight-lipped about how Siri works. So we're not really sure if it's a pared down version of Siri. I would suggest that it is. And the benefit here is that now you can get more out of your Apple Watch without having it paired to a phone or without having it use a ton of energy to talk to your phone to um, do all the things it wants to do. And there are really interesting implications here. So in theory, since this is still M2 and since there's a pretty similar iOS kernel running on these devices, at least in terms of being similar to what's running on pretty recent iPhones, we can assume that in time, um, things like PyTorch and LLMs will be natively available. And what's cool is this will all be directly tied to the health sensors. And right now, in my opinion, most of the AI, most of the AI going on at Apple, at least in terms of long-term inference, right now, with this is remote, has to do with this sort of health sensing and understanding in real time with what the sensors are telling um, means to the person wearing the watch. And in terms of Apple deriving value from this, there are tons of implications here. For instance, uh, your watch can now help infer what better dietary choices are, or maybe help you uh, talk through certain things if you're having problems querying certain kinds of information. And I generally think a lot of the training going on with Apple's huge spend on uh, supposedly a secret internal LLM is likely the next generation of Siri, maybe with some implementation of AI agents, or far better healthcare sensing. 
I personally wouldn't like this to be the case, but it would also be interesting if your Apple Watch could simply listen to what you're saying during the day, transcode everything, and then turn it into notes, or take down a conversation and turn it into actual notes that are then put into some app in your iPhone. Of course, like I said, I probably wouldn't be very into that, but it makes uh, a lot possible on these really small, very power efficient devices. And I think it'll be cool to see how Apple manages this deployment. Obviously, you're not gonna have one model that deploys to everything, but in terms of having kind of the killer AI platform to deploy software on or for AI engineers to actually fine tune against, I think um, the Apple S9 is actually more exciting than the Apple uh, A17 Pro in some ways. And we don't really know how many teraflops of compute this has. It's likely far less than the A17 Pro, probably about half or a third as much, just given the power constraints. But, uh, but yeah, clearly Apple is still a leader in this space. Uh, they're making CPUs faster. The other key is that they have sort of this monolithic approach to their processors. So it's not like they're trying to reinvent the wheel with another um, reconfigured ARM CPU of some kind. Um, obviously, although Apple Silicon is roughly based on the ARM architecture, um, most of what Apple is doing at this point is entirely bespoke outside of a few licensed elements from ARM. So tell us what you think. Um, I'm definitely glad I waited to buy an Apple Watch. I previously hadn't owned one, but um, at this point I like the, uh, the health sensors and they're pretty much as accurate as uh, most medical um, analogs, which is kind of cool. So I'll be buying one. Let me know if you are planning on buying one. And uh, yeah, let us know what you think. As always, if you like this video, please like and subscribe and we'll see you in the next one.